up everybody and welcome to my first ever unboxing video. I feel like I've put this type of video off for a long time because I felt like everyone did them. But then I realized how like handy and helpful they can be. So I kind of thought about doing it this year because um, a few reasons, but one, I just have a lot of people ask me all the time like what gear I use um, and it's it varies across the board depending on what I'm hunting and where I'm at and whatever else um, whether I'm bow hunting or gun hunting or whatever it is I, I just always get that question so I thought it maybe it would be helpful for me to just kind of lay it all out for you guys to see and then also um, I drew an elk tag this year so I've been trying to do research and figure out what I need and you know what I have already versus what I should maybe upgrade with and all the things and it's kind of overwhelming so I thought you know what I might as well also show you guys like all the stuff that I find helpful and useful and things that I will be using so with that I talked to several of my sponsors for this year and they all really liked the idea of me just kind of throwing it out showing you guys what I'm using um, and I do like obviously want to note, I feel like most of you know me well enough, but I truly don't ever show you guys anything that I don't use myself. So don't let the word sponsor scare you. I do have sponsors, but they just help me continue my hunts and be able to do this and create content for you guys. Um, so there's a reason I work with them is because I like them as a company. I like their products, etc. So, um, that being said, there are a few things that I might show you that I haven't yet used, um, but I will be using. So I, yeah, kind of just wanted to make a few of these. We're going to start, um, kind of do it as like an individual basis. Like I don't even have all my elk stuff yet. Um, so once ever, once I get all of that, then I will create like a, this is what I'm taking elk hunting video. Um, or for example, I have some stuff coming in from Tethered this year. They got some new stuff. I've got um, River's Edge, you know. So I do have a few other things that I want to show you guys. But today, we are starting, drum roll, with Corbin, Corbin's Archery. And for anyone who's been around for any amount of time, you know that Corbin is the best bow shop ever. <laughs> Uh, he has been with me since the very beginning pretty much and he's like family now and so he thought it would also be cool to do unboxings for some stuff that he's got in his shop. Um, he is based in Texas but he does have a website so if you guys are interested in anything you see check out CorbinsArchery.com. You can order stuff and he will ship it to you wherever you are. So. I honestly don't even know what's in this box. A lot of my other unboxings, I will know what's in the box, but this one I truly have no idea because Corbin likes to just fly by the seat of his pants and just say, here you go. <laughs> so I really don't even know what's in here. I feel like it's gonna be a decent amount of stuff. So I told him that I need to do a new bow build this year um, just to kind of get ready for my elk hunt. Obviously I need to change a few things from my whitetail setup. So there's a chance there's some things like that in here. Um, but we're going to find out together, so let's do it. <laughs> okay. He really taped this up pretty well. Actually, I think GK, shout out GK, I think he did this. There really is no telling what's going to be in here. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's more boxes. <laughs> Yay! Okay, first thing that I can see that's not in a box. Ooh, Corbin! Getting the rope hat out. I think I look kind of corny in these hats, but they are so in style right now. I look like a Westie. <laughs> nice. Truly, I can't even see what I look like, but. Corbin's Archery, get your rope hat. Nice. Okay, now the rest are in boxes, at least that I can tell. So who knows what's even in here? Um, oh wait, here's some smaller things. Bear with me, I'm new to the unboxing game. Okay, first off we got a rope hat, flat bill. 
These, I'm gonna guess, maybe they're like stickers or something. What is it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we got a Bomar nose button. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, so Bomar nose button. And truthfully, I think these things, from what I hear, are actually kind of handy. Um, it's super simple and like not anything that's like too, you know, game changing. But I think the design of these are handy from what I'm told because the spiky um, design of it is really help helpful to find your same position every time you go to anchor. Put it right on your nose and I think from what I also hear is that it's like sharp enough that you don't have to put a lot of pressure on it to find it so um, I don't know I, I mean these have been out a few years now I don't know if any of you have one let me know what you think of them but I personally don't run one but I do think it's handy especially maybe for somebody who's a new archer who doesn't quite realize how much face pressure to put um, you can find your your anchor point pretty consistent so there you have that. Next envelope, please. Ah, what do we got? Ooh. Okay, so we have some AAE veins. They are the Air AZR, I think I'm saying that right, Air Razor, Air AZR 26s. And to be completely honest with you, I also don't run these, but I do run the AAE hybrids, and I think they're 23s, if I remember. Pause one moment. I do like the AAE veins, though, just in general. Um, I've ran them for several years, and they have just enough stiffness that they help steer pretty well, but they're not super stiff, where it just like throws your whole flight off. They do have some flex to them. Yeah, I believe these are 23s if I remember. So mine are 23s, these are 26s. And so you can kind of see a comparison here, the difference in sizing. They're, they're definitely longer than the rest of mine. But I actually like that color. It's like a pink purple color. So that's pretty neat. I might even have to try those this year. I'm, I'm doing a whole new setup. Um, like I said, I'm doing an elk hunt, so I for sure I'm going to be doing an arrow build also. I have new arrows coming and I might even run, run some new veins depending on how, how I think my setup needs to be. I'm torn between shooting a fixed head and an expandable for elk because I, I got to draw, I got to pull 50 pounds uh, minimum for um, I, it's in Wyoming, so Wyoming's laws dictate you have to shoot at least, you know, 50 pound draw weight. So I might, might experiment with the head that I put on. But for now, that's these. And then there's also these one stringer um, wraps, which I actually have been messing around with making my own. So if you guys are interested in having like custom KMO wraps, I promise I'll make them cool, but I was thinking about doing these, so um, it actually happens to be this exact brand I've been messing around, so stay tuned. Um, but these are Corbin's custom, which are pretty neat, I think. All right, let's get into these boxes, because I think that's everything that's on the side. <laughs> There's so much here. We're doing an unboxing within an unboxing. Ooh. Okay, so we have, oh, that's actually kind of handy. We have some, that almost didn't fit, Helix Broadheads. Single bevel Helix Broadhead FJ2, one and an eighth inch cut. And then they also come, well, I guess you can get it separately, but a, a, a sharpener so you can reuse them. That's really nice. Just make a pile down there. 
Oh, that's an interesting... There's always... Okay, like if you're new here or new to the outdoor space in general, if you're new to bow hunting, the broadhead question is always such a conflicting topic. There's never like a right answer necessarily as to whether you should shoot a single bevel, double bevel, like multi-blade, mechanical versus fixed. Like there's just so many out there on the market and if you tune your bow properly to that specific head, then it should do its job. Like at the end of the day, yes, there are some like specific brands that might be better, but as far as like the exact type of broadhead to use, there's just so many that you can choose from and they're all gonna kill a deer if you have the correct shot placement and tune your bow with, to that broadhead. So I don't have any experience. This sounds terrible. I haven't used any of this stuff. This is, this is why I wanted to make note that I am showing you guys some stuff I don't have, have experience with, but I would be more than happy to shoot these for a video just to test them out. Um, and maybe even shoot a doe with them this year, I think. Um, as long as they fly correctly, I don't necessarily have a preference. Um, they look very sharp. Oh yeah, they're pretty sharp. But I, I personally typically shoot a four blade um, because I like, I like the hole that it creates versus just a slice, but I would be curious to see how these would do. I would, I would try these out. I like that they come with the sharpener or at least have the option to get a sharpener because that's kind of handy. If you're trying to save some money, you can just buy say a three pack and then you can reuse them instead of having to like buy new ones. So I do like that, that's pretty cool. So there you have it, Helix Broadheads. The next box, lucky number two, what have we got? Oh. The charger, 12 volt system. Rechargeable batteries. Huh. Interesting. Looks like something maybe for your like, like a redneck blind or something. Oh, another box. You guys wanted an unboxing, you're getting one. Cause look, more boxes. Oh my, this is like intense. What is this thing? It looks like a solar panel. <laughs> I have no idea what this is. Corbin, 12 volt system for use with 12 volt rechargeable batteries only includes a 12 volt solar panel, weather resistant box, switch panel, USB chargers, volt meter, LED lighting, and quick, quick connect, no, cable quick connects, all mounting hardware and wiring included. That's interesting. So this to me is like you put it based on the photo anyway, you put it in your deer blind, like a hard sided deer blind, like a redneck or something. And then you can have charging always. And it's got USB five volt, two of them, some lights. And then I'm guessing all the wiring is in here and you just connect So this is great for those like long rut hunt sits where you're just waiting it out or even late season. I feel like this would be great for that. And you can charge stuff. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so once again, something I've never used, but I can see this being really handy for Someone who, like if you hunt out of the same blind constantly, or I guess I'm assuming you could get several of these and put one each, put one in your, each blind. Or, you know, whether it's hot or cold, you could even run like a fan or a heater. 
pillow. I personally don't have a <laughs> have a stand to put that in. So maybe we'll do a giveaway. Maybe we'll do anybody that has like a big box blind. We can do a giveaway with this. Neat. Okay. Come on, Corbin, give me something I use. <laughs> I'm just joking. Well, I'm not joking. I personally have not used anything yet, but I, I would. It's not that I wouldn't. Okay. Comment below if you want me to do a giveaway with some of this stuff. Ooh, yes. Love this. Okay. Outdoor Edge. Honest to God, I have used many knives out there, but when it comes to like legitimate outdoor industry, like a good hunting knife that's kind of just commercial on the market, Outdoor Edge and Havilon are both honestly so good. I have Outdoor Edges that are, um, I'm curious what this exactly is. This might be the multi-tool. Well, nifty carry case I think actually oh okay yeah this is the one that has the um, you can change your blades out so there's your blades and then so this one specifically is a three and a half inch razor pro and they are sharp I do have one of these so this is cool you got your main, your main cutting blade, which you can skin or cut actual meat with if you're quartering something, for example, or pop that bad boy back in. How do I do that this way? And then on the back side, you have a gutting knife, which is pretty nifty. I like that. I like that a lot. My other one does not have this, so that's pretty cool. Yay, I got a new knife for elk season. <laughs> and it comes, it looks like it, one, two, three, four, five replaceable blades, which is super nice. And truth be told, if I remember correctly, you could get through like a full white tail easily with just one blade. But maybe if you're cutting, like if you're quartering, say maybe an elk, probably two, maybe three of these, depending on how good you are. <laughs> so. This, I like. I will for sure be using this. That's helpful. This is a little lighter. What? Oh my goodness, that scared me so bad. I don't know if you guys heard that. I know what it is, I bet it's the can call. Oh my goodness. I was like, what's happening? Yikes, okay. I hope it is a can call, because I actually need a new one. I think it's a double, yeah. Oh my goodness. That's funny. Okay, so it's the, the great big can. Whenever they put them in the packaging, they put this little tab on the bottom so it's like you can just play with it. <laughs> That's hilarious. Thanks, Corbin. I did actually need one of these because I I feel like these are amazing and I have called, I actually have called in several deer, bucks and does with this call. However, they are not the most sturdy like they for sure last me like one season and then I gotta get a new one every year. I don't know if it's just like moisture getting in this or what, but these are nice. I don't think I've ever had this giant one though. That's intense. <laughs> That's what I heard when I moved the box and I was like, <laughs> and then also it looks like I also get a buck roar, which I like this too. I needed one of these. Okay, so Primos Buck Roar 2. I have the Buck Roar 1, and only because I stumbled upon it in the woods one time, someone just dropped it and like 
I guess couldn't find it. And so I have the original, but I don't think it had, what is this part? Full volume grunt and wheeze designed for the rut. 360 rotating wrist strap. And it looks like the design's a little bit different. Oh, that's handy. It has a wrist slash arm strap that you can put on your arm and then the bottom of it locks in so you can just have it like this. Let's try this. I'm gonna open it. I feel like that'd be better. Makes my arms look a little chunky. Right, so full draw. No, it's still not very close. Or like holding my bow. And it comes running in and then you draw back. Get him. <laughs> okay, fancy concept. I would need to play around with it, but I do at the very least like, I like this grunt tube. It's a really good one. All right, this I like. Thanks Corbin. We'll mess around with that. Okay, what do we think it is? I'm gonna say, what happened, what happened? Hmm, I don't know. I don't know what it would be. I'm gonna say, I was gonna say broadheads, but we already got those. Um, what's something he has? I feel like it's gonna be something really random, like off the cuff. Okay, leave your guesses below. <laughs> okay, this, okay. <laughs> this is not a surprise because I know Corbin. <laughs> jammer <laughs> he loves nose jammer so I hunted with him in Kansas last year and he put this stuff everywhere and it's funny because like the whole time I'm like being choked out by vanilla because it smells like vanilla but like truthfully if your deer get used to it it's it's it works we had deer very very close to us and not have any issues and that was really honestly the first time that I had used it because I personally don't, like I don't really use a lot of scented anything. So um, I was a little, a little nervous with it, but I trusted him because he uses it all the time. So he knows that at least his deer are used to it and don't seem to mind it. But he also has ground blinds that are kind of permanent. So I think the strategy like if you're going somewhere totally new, I have no idea if it works, but like the strategy is to leave, um, like let's say you have like permanent blinds out and it's to spray those down and leave that scent there. So that way they're used to it already being out there and they don't find it funky. And then when you go to hunt them, you can spray yourself or spray it again, just to kind of help conceal your scent. And then that, that way they are used to that scent already and they don't think anything of it. So I think that's kind of the strategy behind it. Um, but the, there's the spray kind, field spray, and then also the, the wax stick, which I think is supposed to be like longer lasting because you can actually rub it on everything. Um, and supposedly it jams their nose, so they ain't, they're not gonna smell you. Whitetail, mule deer, and elk. So that's pretty neat. Maybe I'll bring it on my elk hunt. <laughs> I knew it was gonna be something, something like very Corbin. <laughs> okay, I think that's it. Um, truthfully, that was a lot of stuff, you guys. A lot of stuff. Some of it I've never used, some of it I have. And like, Moving forward, I really think these unboxings are gonna be really cool just to, for me to, even stuff like that I never even heard, like tr truthfully, I've never even heard of this brand other than like, 
I've seen it around, but I don't know anyone that shoots it. So this would be something cool maybe if I could start doing unboxings and then actually go use some of the stuff. Um, I am actually working on getting another bow here soon. Um, so I might even do like two setups, like a, a random setup and then also one that's like, like a certain buck or something. I'll for sure want to have like a solid setup, but then like something like this, maybe I'll do a second bow build and then just have, have to like try it out on a doe or something, just see how it does. Or something, you know, <laughs> see how many times I can say that. But that was fun. That was like Christmas morning. I feel like I just opened all these gifts <laughs> and now I have them. So that's pretty cool. But I think honestly, I'll talk to Corbin, but I don't see that. It's not gonna be an issue, but I think what I might do is honestly do like a giveaway for you guys and, and um, you know, give some of this stuff out. Cause truthfully, unless Corbin really wants me to set it up in his blind, I don't have a use for this in particular. Um, but I definitely, definitely could see that being handy. I just hunt out of trees mostly. So that would be about the only thing. Um, these, honestly, I might do on my elk arrows. I might do these on my, my elk arrows. We'll have to see, but I like those. So anyway, if you guys liked any of the stuff that I showed you today, or if there are other options, like he definitely has more like things like broadheads. This is not the only kind that he carries for sure. Or, you know, like he has many different wraps and fletchings and color combos of all of them so you can definitely go find more of those on his website and then just like all these little knickknack things like there's there's plenty to choose from so thank you corbin for all of my little goodies that was really fun and if you want his merch also he's got shirts this is one of his older designs but it's like my tried and true i love this shirt i wear it if you look at any of my videos i'm probably wearing it in at least half of them <laughs> So that's how much I like it. And yeah, if you guys are interested, go check out CorbinsArchery.com and I am gonna be doing more unboxings here very, very soon. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.